Hi everyone, hope you are doing good. Welcome to the next video on my YouTube channel. My name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 65 professional. This is my YouTube channel where I share my knowledge and experience with you all. So without further delay, uh, let's start the today's uh, video. And today we are going to talk about very common uh, scenario which you all would have seen in the finance. Uh, we are going to talk about the transaction type which is settlement on the vendors and the customers many times you would have seen when we post any invoice and the payment settlement right uh, system sometimes generate a additional transaction or on, on our vendor and customer transaction which is a type of settlement so now we are going to explore the two different scenarios here where this specific transaction type gets generated and in the rest of the scenario it doesn't get generated okay so i'm going to explore the two scenarios here with you all uh, but there can be possibly more scenarios to this but the idea is to just to give you a thought process that why this new settlement type of transaction gets generated when we post the settlements uh, for the vendor invoice and the payments now the first transaction first scenario which i'm going to talk about the having the different financial dimensions uh, at invoice and the payment level. So on your screen, if you see, we are going to have a, a, a one invoice, which is against this window 1001, and it has been posted with the financial dimension 001. Okay. Now, when we are making the payment for this invoice, let's say the user selects the financial dimension 002 here. Okay. Now, when you will post this payment transaction after selecting the invoice for the settlement system is going to generate an additional transaction here which is the type of settlement okay and that additional transaction voucher which you will see on your vendor transaction will be against the payment transaction because that is the later activity or the see in the sequence that is the second entry which you have posted but what will be that second what will be that additional settlement voucher okay so that additional settlement doubt voucher is what it is going to do is if you observe now i am having uh if, if if you observe that i am having the 002 as a financial dimension for my payment and now i am trying to settle the invoice which is uh which is having the 001 as a financial dimension so it is having the inconsistency in my financials so what system will do on the payment first it will transfer it in on the transaction vouch settlement voucher it is going to transfer that amount from 002 to 001 so what is the balance which we have in 002 as a debit of 1000 so it is going to be credit in the settlement voucher and then it is going to be debited to the 001 okay so which means now as a result of this settlement voucher or the transaction uh, transaction type I'm having the debit of 1000 in my 001 financial dimension, which is similar to my invoice uh, transaction, which is having the credit. And now this can be settled with each other. So this is what system is going to do here. Now let's see how it reflects in the system with this transaction. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create an invoice and uh, select the same financial one financial dimension and post it. So let's create one invoice here. Go to lines. I'm going to select the same supplier here. I'm going to put some invoice date, some invoice number, and let's say credit is 1000 here. Now, if you observe here, the financial dimension on our vendor is 001. Okay. So we are going to post this accounting entry. I'm going to remove the cash discount here just to keep it simple. So I'll save this and I'm going to post this. Now I have this transaction posted. If I go to my vendor transaction, it is going to show me the transaction which I have posted here. Okay. Now the second transaction which I'm going to do here is the payment for this invoice. But during the payment, I'm going to select the different financial dimensions. So I'm going to navigate to the accounts payable in the payment journal and I'm going to create a new payment journal here. Okay. I'm going to do lines and I select my vendor account and then I go to the settle transaction and I'm going to pick that invoice which I have just now posted. Okay. So this is my invoice which I have just now posted. Okay. So I'm going to mark this for the settlement 
and this is selected here now i'm going to remove this method of payment just for the simple case here and now one thing which i have to do here is that i need to change the financial dimension from 001 to 002 okay so which means now i'm making the transaction okay as a payment transaction which is having the different financial dimension than the invoice okay now it should, when once i post this it should generate a additional transaction type uh, which is the settlement so i'm going to post this so now it is posted now what we can do is that we can go to the vendor transactions and see that so now if you see this system had generated two different uh, one one more voucher which is the 58 so now if you see my payment voucher is this which has been posted uh, this is my invoice uh, transaction which I have posted with this but against this invoice transaction you have two more trans settlement transactions which have been generated now let's understand what system has done so if you see this invoice transaction the financial dimension here is 001 but if you go to this settlement one right so if you see this here it is transferring the balance from 001 to 00, 002 okay so the financial dimension is being reversed here okay it has been posted here and now if i want to see the uh real i mean the transactions here this how this transaction is reflecting for me if i go to payment voucher it is against the payment voucher and if i click on the related vouchers here it is going to show me the additional settlement transaction voucher it has generated for me so this is how system generates the additional voucher for our vendor or the customer transaction the implication of this on the trial balance is nothing okay it is going to be zero for you but this is from the system perspective for making the consistency or having the consistency across the similar financial dimensions when it has been posted okay so hope this is clear for the first use case that when the settlement type of transaction is generated when you have a uh, when you have a different financial dimensions across the two different uh, across the two different transactions which you are settling now the next uh, scenario where system is going to generate the settlement type of transaction or the voucher is is the prepayment okay so let's understand this why system generates the additional voucher in this case so in the prepayment let's say we are using the prepayment voucher checkbox on our payment journal so first transaction which we post in the system is the payment okay so i'm going to post the payment uh, uh, i'm going to post the payment journal and i'm going to select this vendors same vendor and i'm when i post the prepayment journal uh, i mark that prepayment voucher checkbox so it changes my posting profile and instead of hitting my regular liability account it is going to hit the asset side as a prepaid okay now what i do is that when i'm posting the actual, uh, actual invoice let's say original invoice has been made uh, post uh, received and uh, i'm going to settle this advance payment which i have made to the supplier so i manually select this so when the invoice has been processed right that time my regular liability account is going to hit and it is let's say 3000 is credit and the expense is debit but when I'm posting these two transactions together, when I'm marking the payment against this invoice, system is going to generate the settlement voucher. Why it is going to generate the settlement voucher and what it is going to do? Now, if you see my invoice is the liability account, right? Now, if I want to settle the liability account with the prepaid account, it is not going to happen. So what system is going to do is that it is going to transfer that prepaid balance, which I am having in my a ledger account to my liability account first right so if my prepaid balance was here as a 3000 debit it is going to credit here first for me and then it is going to uh, transfer as a debit to my liability account and now this liability account is having debit which is going to be settled with my act the invoice uh, liability which is sitting in the credit so it is bringing the uh, balance from my prepaid account to the liability account right and for that purpose it is going to generate the additional voucher here which is the type of the settlement so now let's understand that how it works in the microsoft dynamics with this example so let's do this in dynamics so what we will do is that first we are going to process the payment journal so i am going to 
the accounts payable and going to create the vendor payment journal and I go to the lines and here let's say select some other date so let's say I select 24th here and I'm going to select the same supplier and this time I'm going to post the balance of 3000 okay here and I'm going to replace this method of payment with a blank and then I post it okay now one of the important thing if I post it right now here it is going to hit my regular liability account which is set up in my posting profile but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to mark this transaction as a prepayment so once I mark this as a prepayment it is going to change my posting profile which is having the different ledger account which is mapped there okay so it, I have marked this and now I'm going to post this so once I post this it is going to be reflected in my vendor transactions so if I go to my vendor transactions right now here if I refresh so this is my transaction which has been posted uh, it is having the 001 as a financial dimension but the voucher if I see here is that it is not hitting my payable account it is hitting my prepaid expense or prepaid account which is the balance sheet account for me okay now what I'm going to do is that next transaction is that let's assume I have made the advances now supplier has given me the original invoice so I need to record the original invoice for me okay so I'm going to select this invoice journal I can do this through the purchase order invoice or whichever method you are following so let's say I have received the invoice on 25th uh, and I'm going to select the same supplier and uh, I'm going to select the invoice date, uh, invoice number and I'm going to do this. I'm going to mark that advance payment which I have selected, uh, which I have posted. So I'm going to mark this for the settlement here. It is asking me the warning, the transaction is a prepayment. Do you want to mark for the settlement? So we'll say yes, we want to mark and we say okay here. So it has populated the balances for me and now I'm going to hit the uh, expense account and I'm going to remove this cash discount just for the simplicity and I just save it. Okay. Now one of the important thing which we need to notice here from the different uh, previous use case and I'm not changing the financial dimension. So financial dimension is same for this particular transaction. So it so from that perspective it should not generate the settlement transaction for me. Okay. So now I'm going to hit the post here. So it has posted the invoice for me. If I go to voucher, I can see that it has hit my payable account and this. But now there is a difference, right? So now it is hitting the payable and the payment is having the prepaid account. Can we settle these two accounts each other with each other? No. So system is going to make a settlement transaction type of voucher where it is going to transfer the balance from our prepaid account to the liability account. And then that liability account is going to be balanced with this particular invoice which we have posted. So let's see, uh, has system done, done this? So if I go and refresh, yes, so this is my invoice which system had generated. But if you see the settlement transaction, this is, it has been generated. Now if I see this settlement transaction voucher, see it has credited my prepaid, okay, and debited to my uh, uh, to my actual liability account. So it has transferred the balance of my advances from my prepaid to the liability account. And this liability account is of course is going to be settled with my invoice, which I have posted. Now, again, if I want to see this transaction, so this is my original invoice transaction 56, which I have posted. And this is my additional voucher 59, which has been generated. Now, if I see this voucher, now this additional voucher should be available as the settlement voucher should be available as a related voucher for me here. So this is available here. So this is the another case where system is generating the additional voucher on your vendor transaction and same is going to happen on the customer transaction if you do the same. Okay. So hope it is, it makes you, uh, ma makes it clear for you that why this new additional transaction is getting generated on vendor and customer transaction in some cases but in other cases it is not going to it is not generating so normally when you have a consistency if you have a similar financial dimension there is no account change when you are settling with each other 
system will not generate this additional voucher here system is going to generate only when there is some difference and i have explored the two use cases today there can be possibly more use cases earlier there was a use case where the where you used to have a different remittance address on your uh, invoice and the payment but now there is a there is a there, there is a feature which allows you to settle with different remittance address and it doesn't impact on your settlement so hope uh, it 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 clears your uh, uh, your concepts here about the settlement transaction type so that's it for today's uh, uh, video hope you enjoy my content and if you do i request you to like share and subscribe and post it in a comment if you want me to uh, uh, if you want me to create another blog on a specific topic which you would like to hear from me and if there is something which i should improve please uh, let me know on in my uh, in my con uh, in my comment box okay so hope uh, this will help you in your implementation and in your analysis so that's it for today's video thank you all keep learning keep sharing okay thanks